Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara. Today we are continuing or really finishing our fantasy series discussion with the third and final book in the Serpents and Dove trilogy. If you would like to see this in video format without ad breaks, you need to head on over to Patreon and sign up. We also have a fun after show available right now. If Patreon isn't your style, you can hear all of the after shows and exclusive content in audio only format on the Spreaker app. Sign up as a supporter to gain access. Don't forget, you can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Club's app for even more bookish chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. And if you're on Patreon, there's some something special behind me for the first time ever. Oh, yes! They got a bookshelf! <laughs> yes, it's cute, too. It's so cute. Yes, I love it. I so will now, continue you to have decorate. A addiction yes, officially. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Heartful of Ink, on Instagram at KC underscore Heartful of Ink, or at my website, heartfullofink.com. Okay, so before we begin, we just want to remind you that as always with Book Chats, we talk full spoilers here, so you've been warned. Spoiler alert. Today we are discussing Gods and Monsters, written by Shelby Marin. Oh my God, this is the third <laughs> time I, mean, I can't say it right. Y'all know what I'm saying. The audiobook is narrated by Holter Graham and Skaska Merveld, published on July 27th, 2021 by Harper Teen and Harper Audio. The hardcover is 612 pages and the unabridged audio is 16 hours and 58 minutes. Casey, would you kindly share the synopsis? Evil always seeks a foothold. We must not give it one. Lou has spent her whole life running. Now, after a crushing, fl- a crushing blow from Morgan, the time has come to go home and claim what is rightfully hers. But this is no longer the Lou her friends knew, no longer the Lou who's captured a chasseur's heart. A darkness has settled over her, and this time it will take more than love to drive it out. From Serpent and Dove to Blood and Honey, concluding with Gods and Monsters, Shelby's M- Shelby Mahern's stunning fantasy trilogy delivers thrills and romance. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Sorry, that was the final <laughs> paragraph, and I wasn't going to say it. And then it, it no, it, no doesn't. it doesn't. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. I, I started this series with high hopes, and it just slowly fizzled out, and it... it got worse Aww. in this final book and so yeah yeah <laughs> hi hi key no it doesn't that's that's where i'm at high level okay so for me this was not better than the second book it was slightly better than the first book and to be honest i was just glad it was over this wasn't the worst thing i ever read we experienced that last year, so it's not <laughs> as bad as that. Um, sorry, not sorry, Nora Roberts. Are you talking about <laughs> um, Rachel Vincent? But, <laughs> no, actually, I think this... Actually, I do believe that Nora Roberts would have been worse than uh, Rachel Vincent. And if it was any longer, we would have oh, stopped absolutely. it. absolutely. Like we stopped Rachel Vincent. Rachel Vincent, we got how many books in before we stopped? I think we pushed to three books yeah. out of six. And actually, side note, v- Rachel Vincent can be the one to be thanked for us trying to stay away from long series. Mm-hmm. We said max three books. Yeah. No, no more than three. It starts to get too risky when you have mm-hmm. a very long running series that is not proven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we do have one long running series that we bring up a lot on this show, but that's Mercy because Thompson we are, series. yeah, we're diehards for it. Right. We love it. We were seven or eight books in when we started the podcast. Like we were already like, yes, eight books. Mm-hmm. We know we love it. We keep going with it. Right. But um, yeah, picking up a new series with eight books in it would be a disaster right now. Yeah. So because of that, I think there are a couple on our list that are four that we may or may not eventually reach, but we've really been honing in on three and two books, mm-hmm. duologies and trilogies because of that. So with that said, 
Yes. Cats and monsters. The end. Thank God it's over. <laughs> and it just... I think Shelby could be a good author in another five to ten years if she keeps practicing her craft and honing mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But right now she's so tropey and leans on the trope and leans into the tropes and doesn't do anything unique or different with the tropes. Mm-hmm. And there were so many basic just basic issues that, you know, by your third book, you need to have a critique partner who yells at you and says, don't do this. Or you need to have an editor who's kicking your butt and says, all right, if you want to do this, then you need to have this type of consequence. You need to Mm -hmm. have this type of reaction. And nobody's doing that for her right now, at least not with gods and monsters. But if she finds that support team, she could be better. So check this out. Because you said that, I wanted to see if she has anything new. Mm -hmm. Something called The Scarlet Veil came Uh out in September of last year. This did not have the fanfare that got, uh, I guess, uh, what this whole series, Serpent and Dove, did. Because, so like I said, it came out in September of 23, and it only got 5,400 ratings. Dang. That says a lot to me. People stopped reading her. They did. And this is actually um, a vampire fantasy, which is different, but it's more YA. Mm -hmm. Another huge book, 640 pages. Did they ever mention vampires in this book? They mentioned everything else under the sun. There was werewolves, there was mermaids, there was a fucking dragon that appears out of nowhere. No, I don't remember vampires. Maybe she was saving it for the Scarlet Veil. Maybe. But it would have made sense to bring it up in here so people would want to, you know, keep reading the next book or spinoff series or whatever. I know one thing. She's got this thing about French, being French. Is she French? Like, Didn't we look her up and she's from, like, Oklahoma or Arkansas? Yeah. Let, wait, let's see. Um, Because the names of this new book are all French. Jean-Luc. Wait, and- Jean-Luc? Yeah. Isn't that what's his name? John Luke? Oh wait, is that the uh wolf guy? No, no the, the friend who became a hero in this book. Oh, oh yes. Is, that, is yes. it John yes. Luke? Seely is in here. Ah! Seely oh was the best part of the book. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna read it. This is a spin-off. Ah! Okay. I I have to say. Out of everything that happened in this book, wow. Seely was my favorite. You know, I, she was the biggest surprise. She was the biggest surprise, but I fucking love her. So I will go read her book. <laughs> I will let you do that and you can come back and tell me because I, I honestly, no matter how much I liked that character, I don't want to read more. Um, not there. today. If, if hope- you come back and say, Tamara, something changed. This is five what? stars. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Then I'll try it. But if you're not saying that high praise, <laughs> I'm not even going to look at it. Yeah. If it's not good, I won't even tell you. I'll just let it disappear into the ether. But no, I her character development over the entire trilogy was the best. And I love her so much. And like that is the one gold star thing that Shelby did mm-hmm. was Seely. So mm-hmm. like... Okay, yes. If she has a spinoff, I want to read her spinoff because that has been my favorite thing in this and book. And I guess they go tackle vampires because it's a vampire book. <laughs> um, so there you go. There are the vampires. Um, but yeah, I agree. She was the best surprise. Like when she showed up and they're like, what are you doing here? And she just stole stuff. She stole jewelry. And she stole, She's like, you know. yeah, no, of course I picked my dad's lock and like stole everything out of his. It was just such a blase. Like, yes, I'm a thief. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. They make such a big deal about Lou and Coco being thieves. But then she just, you know, stole from her dad. And I was like, you're weird, but okay. And they never called her a thief, even no. though she was. See, Seely was hiding in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Her and Lou are very similar, oh, actually. Yeah. But the difference is she dressed a certain way. She knew mm-hmm. how to talk. She knew mm-hmm. how to look mild and complacent. Mm-hmm. And Lou didn't. <laughs> yes. 
But when it came down to it, they were really very similar in how they talked. You know, yeah, she Mm -hmm. wasn't as foul mouthed as Lou. No. No, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to make yeah, me go back no. there. She cussed uh, Jean Luc out. Like, did you follow? Do you think I don't know how to take care of myself? You know, mm-hmm. she kind of gave Ray her riot act a little bit. So, which was good. <laughs> he needed it. Mm hmm. Yeah, she was nice. I, I have to say, now that that came up, I think mm-hmm. she was the best part. Mm hmm. She was a nice surprise, and I liked her parts. Yes. Yes. No, she was the best part of this whole book. Even but. though she was kind of hard-headed still. Like, of she course. would say things like, but she's a witch! You know, like, those kind of, like, really... She did it a couple times. Yeah. Which I thought was fair because of the way she was tortured in book two. Like, but she got over it very quickly. And then she was more horrified that Lou heard her call her a whore. And like wanted to she apologize so for bad. that. <laughs> like, She's like, yeah. Oh my god, she heard me. She oh. heard me say that I need to apologize. Oh my god, can we be friends? Like, yes, she was upset, but she got over it. Yeah. And we complained about Reed in book two, how he dragged that out for five hundred fucking pages before he finally got over the witch thing. So like, I'm glad Seely like got over it really fast. Hmm. She did what Reed couldn't fucking do and then had to go through all over again in this book because, goddamn, we don't suffer enough with his angst. Yeah, but I think also, though, yeah, Celie was tortured by a witch, but she was saved by a witch. Mm-hmm. So she had really two stark different experiences really oh, quickly. Yes. I was tortured, then saved. <laughs> and this woman knows I used to be with her man. She has no reason mm-hmm. to like me, but she helped mm-hmm. me. But she helped me. So now I'm going to help her and mm-hmm. I'm going to apologize. And yeah, I'm a little upset that she's a witch, but you know what? We're friends now. We're on this adventure together. I'm sticking with you. We're going to mm-hmm. do this together. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm absolutely 100% going to stab Morgan. And she fucking did it. She did. She, she did she, it. <laughs> she did. She was like, mm. she took care of it. Mm-hmm. surprisingly miss weak and yeah. timid is she the one it. with the knife <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like her um i kind of like jean luc too even though he started off really ick at the beginning okay but did you believe that he was actually honorable and a hero because in book one he was such an asshole no i think that he is kind of read 2.0 i feel like in his he is stuck in his ways and mm-hmm. it's gonna take someone to force him out of it Seely. yeah and it's gonna be kind of similar he's like thinking this is how it should be i'm always right and he will change just because of her mm-hmm you know, I think he even, even with Reed, he's kind of was like helping him. Remember when he was helping mm-hmm. him in the book? <laughs> he was yeah. trying to be mean. It's <laughs> like, it like, put him on the horse. And it's like, put him on the horse. I mean, drag him. <laughs> drag him, drag him up. Yes. <laughs> um, he's like, yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to be torturing him. <laughs> Forget. <laughs> but I feel like he has grown a little bit in the second book, and which leaves the door open for him to be. I bet he'll end up being more likable than Reed. I hope so. I really hope so. Because Reed is ick. I mean, even in this book. So the author did not fix the problem I had with Lou and Reed, which is, and the author actually called it out herself mm-hmm. in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, They were trying to figure out when did we fall in love? When Do we start Mm -hmm. liking each other? You know, it was actually called out because we don't fucking know. You don't know. (laughs) The characters don't know. There was no specific moment. And I think she was beating a dead horse with how like, oh, their love is the purest love. Their love is magic. Everybody can feel their love. Even when he doesn't love her, he loves her so much. Oh, listen to their glorious love story because it's so full of love and glory. I was just like, shut no. the fuck up. No. If you have to tell me this 18 million times in the third book, I won't believe it. 
she's trying to make it seem like it's one of those faded mates thing. Mm-hmm. Like, not that they actually fell in love, but I guess you can't use faded mates with the witches, I guess. Yeah. But um, that's essentially the story which she was trying to sell because even, like, we... Okay, so what... I predicted did happen. The first part of the book, Lou was obviously taken over and she's having mm-hmm. conversations with herself and other things in there with her, you know, other people that mm-hmm. were, what's her name? What's Lay's name? Um, Nic- Nick Galena has taken. N- yes. And um, so I'm like, okay, so she's in this dark place doing these conversations, which I expected. So she, we didn't get to see her and Reed together as themselves this whole book really until the very end so first it was her Mm -hmm. you know she was the problem and then reed was the problem because he did some dumb shit like oh let me make everyone forget let me make her mother forget her Mm -hmm. and that then i forget her which also i think was an attempt to clean up the last situation when Mm -hmm. with lou and what's his face um but when that happened so he wasn't himself so he was the read of book one again Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even believe their relationship still because we didn't have any real moments between them. There was themselves. no new growth. It yeah. was continuous of bullshit. I don't know. I don't have a phrase they there. But yeah, they- no, it, it backpedaled so much because yeah. Okay, so fucking Lou has been possessed. She's not in her own body. Nicolina is not hiding it well. It's so obvious. She was saying, she was talking in her rhymes. She was being cruel to everybody. Yes, Lou was in a bad place, but like, Jesus Christ, the people who supposedly love her the best were like, yeah, no, this is just the new Lou. She's talking about killing people. She's talking about the mice again. You know, like they didn't hear Nicolina talk about the mice five million times. They are so book. slow, so they were stuck so on stupid, slow. so stupid. It like and it was like, ridiculous. Ew, she touched me. I feel like I want to earl. Like, uh, uh, yeah. he's so disgusted by her. But then he's like, "But I love her. Why? Why do I feel like this? Why?" I, he he is so dumb, so dumb, and that was so aggravating. Dumb. Even Coco was like, is she pregnant? Yeah, like, what's happening? Like, messes with her brain. Like, her ass ate raw meat. They're like, um... Yeah. (laughs) She's tearing into meat with her teeth. And they're like, oh, it's just Lou being Lou. No, (laughs) no. But I would have believed their love. Like, let's say Reed had said, you know, this is not her. Mm Mm-hmm. Had immediately been, immediately like he could call it out i know her mm-hmm. this is in her and if he had forced nicolina out i would have been able to appreciate that mm-hmm. but that's not what happened they dragged that out forever like jesus christ it was so long did you think that we needed to hear about nicolina's past as a mother and all of that No. When she was going by a different name and everything. Honestly, I am more confused by the timelines now. Mm -hmm. Because, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So, Nicolina is a couple centuries old, but Coco's mother and her aunt are much older than that. Um, Morgan is also probably closer to their age maybe or maybe not i don't mm-hmm. know that was unclear too because she was falling in love with gods but also young enough to be madame labelle's like bestie growing up and i don't think madame labelle is immortal but like no i don't think I so no but then the whole thing with like this is how the magic was started this is how like the church came to be this is angelique's ring this is what's his name who watches the waters who's also possibly coco's father but that was neither confirmed nor denied and like it was like is everybody centuries old or are they 20 years old like coco saw her mother six years or when she was six years old but I thought their love story happened like a thousand years ago. So like, yeah, the timing is strange. What is happening? 
Mm-hmm. And then, so bringing all of that up just made it more confusing, not yes, not yes. explaining it better. I think that is probably one of my problems. I did kind of tone, like I tuned out at certain points because I'm like, what is happening or what? <sighs> like, I just could not grasp, Mm-mm. I guess, what the author wanted me to get. Yeah. It. Yeah. And again, that's part of why I'm trying to give Shelby this grace of like, she's a new author. Maybe in a few years, she'll Look, be she's better four books at this. In, she's not a new author anymore. Yeah, no, this four point, books in, you're not a new author. Are you? Technically, yes, because you're learning how to close a trilogy. And like, this is the world building you should have done in book one. But I can forgive you for not knowing that in book one. But like, no, at this point, come on. No, not to me. I just, <laughs> no. <laughs> and the look on my face, y'all on the, on, not on Patreon, you missed the look. I was like, the fuck? It was a beautiful look. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the camera like, oh, I'm making a face. <laughs> it's, I'm trying to give her grace, but I was not impressed by this book. I was disappointed. It felt like she was like, oh my God, it's the final book. I need to throw in everything in the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. I'm going to include mermaids. I'm going to include a dragon. I was like, mermaids? Yeah, fucking mermaids. They mentioned the mermaids in book two. I remember they mentioned them. But it just felt so weird. I'm like, what is this? weird. Yeah, the mermaids, the dragon, and then I hate the trope of, like, let's lose my memory. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, God. Honestly, when that happened, trope. I really, really, I haven't posted on Goodreads. I'm like, please, not not the memory. Oh, God. That is how I felt. See, I'm like, here we go. There could have been so many better other things that he did or lost. Like, mm-hmm. he could have given up his magic mm-hmm. to take away her magic, Morgan's magic. Like, that would have been a fair price, and that would have been an excellent thing to have to deal with. It was like, I'm no longer a witch. I can't help you. I'm not the weapon that I'm trying to pretend and I now want I to be, be at this witch. point. <laughs> and like, no. Yeah. Because there was that line in the final battle where he was like, I'm the weapon. And I was like, you idiot. You spent the last three books hating witches so much you don't change that fast or that fully like yeah. and even when he lost his memories of just lou he reverted back to hating magic and forgetting he even had magic which like, is they had not to keep really hitting explained. him over the head yeah no. I yeah, think cause... the author was trying to go for the point of like magic is lou lou is magic he ties it all to her Hmm. Even though, again, like, he refused to ever study magic with her. He always studied and practiced on his own or in the heat of battle. So, like, he shouldn't have lost those memories. Which Coco does actually call out. So one character does call it out, but it's not resolved. No. It's like she mentions it, like, yeah, this is weird. You've practiced magic without her. So So you're intentionally repressing Mm -hmm. this. Which, you know, just lean into that. Make him give up magic entirely. Right. And then have to struggle with like, oh, this is what it feels like to be human. This is what it feels like to be me. And then that would have been so much better. Yeah. Instead, we got pages and pages. Okay, so first, let me just take one step back. So the lake, mm-hmm. the the water, the truth-telling water, whatever. Yeah. That segment was so fucking long. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why is this so long? When is it going to end? <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the memory loss. And I'm like, why is this taking so long? When is it going to end? They dra- She dragged that out to the last fucking possible minute. Yeah. That annoyed me. Like, that, that should have ended a lot faster. They're like, but no, as soon as he remembers, then Morgan will remember you. And I'm like, it doesn't fucking matter if Morgan remembers her or not. You're mm-hmm. all going to fucking die anyway. Right. She has plans on plans on plans. Like, right. you're, this is it. You're dead. Yeah, sounds like some more, I don't know, story plotting needed to happen. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, 
I don't know. It just, it fell flat for me mm-hmm. in all those points that were supposed to be, <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I was like, oh, mm. yeah, I guess. Sure. And even like, okay, so I love a good action scene. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we have read many a good fight scenes, war scenes. Oh, yes. Pierce Brown did them epically. Mm-hmm. In space, but yes. In space. <laughs> but they were still at the root. You felt betrayal. Yes. You felt yes. the backhand. <laughs> you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. felt the war. Yes. This scene, like this final stand or fight or whatever i'm like oh my god when does this shit end i just started glassing over i'm like oh my god why is this so long why i hated it and i know that was supposed to be like the pentacle right this final wow oh, it's supposed to be great and then we win and yay mm-hmm. and i was like the opposite yeah so I started getting really annoyed when they came up with their stupid ass plan. Cause I was like, I have read this plan a million times. It's going to fail immediately. Even mm-hmm. if I hadn't read this plan a million times, you two are the two most wanted people of all time in this entire fucking kingdom. You don't think for two seconds that the King's going to walk up to you and like immediately stab you with the poison. Be like, right. no, no, right. Luke is going to protect us because he's a hero. Oh, no. my Jean-Luc God. Luke is the captain. Like, you he's didn't spend. Stab you dummy. Yeah. He can't not do it or he'll the out king, himself. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And they're like, God. we're just going to pretend to be stabbed. But our eyes are wide open, staring at everything. Like, we're conscious and watching you. And of course, after you're stabbed, our eyes roll into the back of our heads because now we're unconscious. I'm like, duh 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 (laughs) like fucking duh what did you expect did you think he was gonna put you in the same fucking room as madame labelle like no fucking way was that gonna happen that was a horrible plan it was the worst plan i would have enjoyed this moment better if they had come up with a different plan and then it failed epically and then they got captured because at least then it would have been different. At least then they would have had like some kind of like moment of like, we're doing this. We're we're on our way. Oh no, here's the king. We're caught. But that's, maybe this does lend into what you were saying of inexperience in writing mm-hmm. these kind of scenes. Because again, we have, and I will, I'm telling you, I feel like Pierce Brown has the crown with those type of scenes. Mm-hmm. We have been in scenes where we're like, that is dumb. Why mm-hmm. are they doing that? Mm-hmm. And then you you get there. He's two steps ahead of us. And then yes. it comes back around. You're like, oh, my God. Yes. It was fake. It was so revealed. And you're screaming <laughs> in the book because how <laughs> the fuck did you miss this detail? Yeah. Yes. But Whereas I, here, they're like, here's our detailed plan. And We're it's just going to outline it everywhere. And then it's it fails instantly because, Quickly. of course, it's going to fail instantly. Like, Yeah. And there was no comeback. It wasn't no. even like, yeah, we had a deviation for this. We just didn't tell you. Aha! It was nothing. Yeah, no. No. It was like, oh, we <laughs> fail because we're bad at this. <laughs> Uh, yes you are bad at this yes you did fail yes you You are bad at this let's take a break (laughs) (laughs) we need a break from all this awfulness and uh we're gonna listen to some commercials you guys by listening to those you are supporting the podcast and don't forget to pick up a copy of the book review journal available right now it makes a great gift or if you need a new journal for yourself and uh, we'll be right back because we have more comments on gods and monsters as well as housekeeping and other things stay with us Welcome back. Yeah, the the plan was dumb. The dumb the, was the dumb. plan was dumb for the sake of being dumb, mm-hmm. which I hate. Yes. And the final showdown was also dumb. Yes. Oh my god. Yes, it was so bad. They're literally on the platform about to get burned. The tiny spark lights under their feet, but then the king burns himself way faster than the hay under their feet. Because, like, he's dead in two seconds. They're, like, ten minutes in, both still trying to untie them. And it's just not happening. And then Reed gets free. And then fucking Lou is like, I'm going to take everybody's pain. Because I've done this before. So, like, I'm going to take on four people's burning pain while also being actually burned alive. 
and then nothing happens. Yeah. She's fine. Which it's is okay. weird. Like her hair's not even singed off. She didn't lose her eyebrows. She's not burned to death. She's not unconscious. She's just like, yeah, let's go fight. Let's run around and fight because I can still breathe. You have to have a consequence. Mm -hmm. So even if Lou, I don't know, had her whole right arm burned and scarred, Mm -hmm. that's something. Yes. That's something. Yes. Her feet should Um, be burned because her feet were in the fire the longest. Right. She should be unconscious because remember in book one, and they kept bringing this up like three or four fucking times. She took on the pain of the witch she was burning yep. and she screamed and screamed and screamed and passed out. And she was unconscious for like three or four days when she did that. Right. Now she's a lot stronger and has the magic of the three goddesses. But like she should be unconscious for 10 minutes then. Yeah. Not just like, oh, I'm fine. You pulled me out of the debris and like I don't even have a scratch on me. I was like, bitch, no. Unless you should be power... bloody and burned and coughing up mucus and like and if it wasn't we should have gotten some details about how the goddess's power mm-hmm. protected her mm-hmm. or how it worked in unexpectedly or how yes. something else to buffer that yes um that we didn't get because the men were burned but then Coco started crying, so her tears turned into rain and cured everybody because, of course, it did. And then Lou is just totally fine. And it's like, no, if you're She's going to fine. do this, there needs to be some sort of consequence for your actions. Like, the worst thing possible happens, something bad needs to happen with it. Even if it's her feet are burned and so she's running around in pain on bloody feet because the blisters keep popping. Something. Like, something. Give us something. Give us something. Don't give us the happiest go lucky ever fight scene because now you remind me of Stephanie Meyer where the bad guys show up and then they shake hands and leave. Like, like oh, wait, this is what could have happened. Yeah. That really happened. <laughs> Right. I was I will say I was surprised she killed off one of Bo's sisters. Yeah. But I don't even know who the fuck this girl is. So yeah. like I don't care that she's dead. I was surprised that she did it, but I don't care. What do it they would call have been that? so much more emotional if Bo had died. She was um what do you call those? Um where someone's like a sacrifice for no reason. It doesn't even yes. pay off. Yeah, that's um, exactly what she was. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, she died, but even Bo wasn't really put out. It was like, yeah. He cried for 10 minutes, and then he wanted sticky buns. Exactly! Like, we're all gonna chill in the bakery and eat these fresh sticky buns? Like, f- like what? Yeah, no. No. <laughs> I think somebody came up to her after was like, you need to kill somebody here. And she's like, alright, I'll just kill the sister. So then somebody's sad. But then, like, they're not sad. No, they're not sad. They're, it was a waste. It was. It was an absolute waste of killing off a character. I'm looking at the little end. I'm trying to see where... Was it a... What do you call it at the end? Was it a time... It was a time jump at the end, wasn't it? With the epilogue? In the epilogue? Not by much. Okay, so yeah, that horrible ending. And then we have this epilogue, which... Okay, so to give the author credit... When Ansel appeared around the 200-ish page mark, that kind of surprised me a little bit. I'm like, oh, it's Ansel. I mean, I guess that as soon as they were like, yeah, there's a new white wolf following us. And the other guy, the other animals have disappeared. And it's weird that Lou hasn't named this one and ignores it because Lou's not Lou. But we don't care about that. And I was like, it's probably the ghost of Ansel now. You thought that the whole time? I did. I see. They kept mentioning the wolf, but it was like in one ear and out the other for me. Like, I didn't even think about Ansel I didn't think of anything really which is bad because usually I'm like conspiracy conspiracy theory like what Mm -hmm. is it who is it and it just totally I didn't give two shits about it that's I was like with everything that's going down and the fact that we have gods and monsters now and everybody's so continuously upset that Ansel's dead I feel like this is the ghost of Ansel Mm -hmm. So that's me just, you know, 
reading way into it and guessing. <laughs> well, he came and he helped her. He relieved mm-hmm. her and Coco of their guilt. He relieved mm-hmm. them of that. Mm-hmm. And okay, that was a little nice little part, you know. Okay, mm-hmm. great. It seems like he's going to be gone. And then he shows up in the epilogue. He's like being a creep. Standing <laughs> around. <laughs> While he turned around while she was dressing, so uh, he yes, wasn't he staring at her. But he's just hanging around during the wedding stuff, and mm-hmm. he's just like, it's weird. I'm like, I feel like the author didn't need to do that. I feel no. like he could have left him. He said his goodbyes, mm-hmm. right? Leave him there. Yeah. I don't think I needed to see him again in the epilogue, personally. Uh... I was over it at that point, too. I was over the whole book at that point. So I was like, yeah. Stepping back, I can kind of understand. Like, it's a nice way to, like, super happy wrap this up. The one dead character anybody cares about is happy. And he's happy for his friends. And he's talking about how their love is the truest love. And he's always believed in their love. It was annoying. But, like, I'm almost happy it was from his point of view and not Lou's or Reed's. Because if it was from their point of view, it would be way worse, gush-wise. You know what? Does someone else have to watch The Waters now? Yeah. Maybe it'll be him. I hope so. I thought it was going to be Coco. Because she kept getting in the water and, like, the water was talking to her and then her mother appeared. But I was like, is it going to be Coco? Because she had the relationship with this dude Mm -hmm. who might or might not be her father. I'm not going to let that go. Like, was was he her father? I feel like it was, but it was just not said. I feel like it was. She thought it might have been. But her mother never confirmed or denied. Which is, but why? That's another thing. Like, why? What does it matter at this point? Say if that's the father. What does it matter? What would have changed? I had a thought at that part. And I was like, this series would have been so much better if it was Coco's story the whole Mm. time. Like, if Lou and Reed were kind of the side story and we were focused on Coco. Mm -hmm. Because even her relationship with Bo had more depth than Lou and Reed. And like, yeah, they were a one night stand, which we never got to see how that started. And then Bo just like randomly decided to quit being prince and run away with her so like what did she do to him to make him leave everything for this now he's a king though now he's a king but he was a prince at the time but like yeah he gave up everything for her and was happy he complained a little bit but like i would have rather read their story yeah, I think maybe the author do will, will do another spinoff with them, or maybe they'll come up again, you know, in this other story. I kind of hope so, because, like... Which, by the way, so you have the hard copy of this? Did you have the hard copy? Uh, no, I got it from the library this time, because okay. I didn't want to buy it. Because um, I didn't even notice at the back of this is the first thing for the Scarlet <laughs> Va- Veil. It's at the oh, back, the prologue oh, okay, so, is at the back. So open it up. So tell us what it is. Um, evil lurks in Bel- Belterra. Read on for a sneak peek at the Scarlet Veil. Oh, okay. So let's see. It's it's a prologue that is um uh, like fourteen pages. Whose point of view don't. is it? I don't. Okay, so it doesn't say like a name at the top, okay. but I think it's what's her face. Seely, Seely, yeah, yeah, because she talks about my mother applied her oil every morning and she stared at her reflection. My father smoked his pipe when he was receiving guests. Blah blah blah. Is this mother? Is her mother's name Philippa? That was her sister. Okay, her sister who got murdered in chapter one. Okay, so this is back in time. Like okay. clockwork, Philippa would reach for her silver brush when our nursemaid Ev- Evangeline lit the candles. Blah blah blah. So this is a throwback. Oh. This history. She's like thinking of the past. Um. Then they. Oh yeah. Here's chapter one. Twelve years later. So the prologue is a pre before, mm-hmm. and then twelve years later. I think this might all be from her point of view. Ooh. I think. 
because it doesn't have a name. It just says it doesn't have, Mm -hmm. you know how this one went back and forth? Forth between Lou and Reed. Yeah, Yeah. I think this might be all her POV. Okay. I'm intrigued. Yeah, because otherwise it would have her name, right? Yeah. I'm intrigued. Let's find out more. Mm Mm-mm. Ugh. No, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm looking at the book. I'm trying not to read. I'm like, read. No, 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 I'm not doing it. You can't make me. That's how I feel. But <laughs> my luck, you're going to come back and be like, it was the best damn book ever. <laughs> and I'll be like, why? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, you know, she had a critique partner come up to her after Gods and Monsters and just kicked her ass. I was like, you need to make this better. Because you need you need critique partners who will kick your ass. They'll hold yeah. your hands, but they'll kick your ass. I agree. Oh, you know what? I did want to ask you, what did you mm-hmm. think about the couple of scenes that Lou and Reed had that were the sex kind scenes? of sexy scenes? Yeah. They were weird. So Reed... He's acting very different now that he w- didn't remember her. Mm-hmm. Like that whole scene where he's like telling her what to do and telling her. I'm like, wait. He's was very he- aggressive. I'm like, he wasn't like that before. He was very scared in book one because he's like, I've never done this. I don't know what to do. So he was saying his body remembered and his body knew and he wanted that release. But his brain was like getting in the way. But like, so he's telling her to like masturbate and all this stuff. It's very weird. It feels very like the author was trying on a different yeah. type of sex scene for size to see how it works. It just didn't really jive with what mm-hmm. I was familiar with from this pairing. Yeah, no. It seemed weird and kind of out of place. And I'm like, I'm, I remember, I'm like, oh my God, what is what is this? I kind of felt like it was out of place. It was out of place. I think she kind of wants to push herself to go darker and sexier in other books. And I feel like if she ever does anything with Coco and Bo, it will be a lot sexier. Because uh, at one point... um Coco said, like, kink is consensual, but this isn't consensual or or something. And I was like, are you going to try and bring kink into this? Because I don't want that. Maybe in Coco's book. So, like, okay, this is my problem, though. If she wants to test the waters and go a little bit more adult feeling, why in the hell are you writing young adult books? Because it's what sells. And because publishing (sighs) puts women into young adult, even if their characters are adult. Um, because you know what, Sarah J. Mass is not writing young adult. That's what it's labeled as, though. That's what her publisher labels it as. New stuff cannot be labeled as new young adult. It can't be. Like I know her old Throne of Glass Mm -hmm. was, and I know the first three books Mm -hmm. of the, you know, uh, Court of Throne Thorns and Roses or whatever, Akatar. I know that was, but distinctly, there is a clear line of demarcation demarcation you know what i'm trying to say yeah so most booksellers and bookstores don't care they will put all of her books together and if the first one is labeled as young adult they will put books one through seven in the same spot because you know when the customer walks in the customer wants to go to one spot to get all of the books they're not wanting to walk back and forth in every which way to like oh book one is over here but book three is over here and book seven's here because it's in the super erotica area or whatever like no they're just gonna put everything together in one spot so it's all that. still lumped under young adult i have a problem with that because mm-hmm. i feel like we talked about this in yes. our after show you're marketing to one group but we're trying to write for another group yes that's not right. No. <laughs> and if this not author right. is trying to grow up her characters mm-hmm. and have more, I don't know, spicier scenes, mm-hmm. then the labeling needs to change. Yes. Yes. Which this, yes, it's young adult. They're 
They're spicy, but they're not that bad. Like, I would be okay with a teenager reading this. Yeah, Um, but what if she... You said, what if Coco and Bo get different scenes? So what if Celie and Jean-Luc get different scenes? It's tagged as YA. It is. So, I don't know. Celie was saying she's a prude, so it might... She might not get too crazy. But Mm. it's the industry publishing... Women who ever want to write fantasy will 99% of the time be shoved into YA fantasy because, you know, women can't write fantasy. It mm-hmm. has to be adult. Because, um, you know, sexism, misogyny, it's bullshit. See, that's, I think, part of the reason why they created a new grouping. Because mass books, like, if you look at the mm-hmm. Choice Awards for last year, Sarah J. Mass. She falls under the romanticy column now. Mm-hmm. She was not. I think she falls under romanticy. She didn't have anything I'm new. I'm glad last we year. have this new genre because now we can try and grow like and have adult characters here and not call it young adult because young adult is four, 15, 16, 17 year olds. It's coming of age. It's learning to be your true self. Not can I have kinky sex with everybody? <laughs> Yeah, like I'm looking, Fourth Wing is under romanticy. It's not mm-hmm. way. That's good. Um, the Ashes, uh, uh, the Ashes and the Star Curse King that we read last summer, that is also here. It's not under YA. So, I mean, I feel like, yes, I think that is probably still true in a lot of cases, but I wish they would stop doing it mm-hmm. because now there's another place for these stories to lie. Yes. Where it doesn't have to be quote unquote YA. And people are reading, I feel like this is a little off topic, but on Book Talk, people are all in on dark ro- uh, romance mm-hmm. and romanticy. Mm-hmm. I feel like YA is on the downslope right now. I feel like, yeah, there's still a lot, but or maybe my algorithm has changed because I'm seeing so many people reading older books with characters that are older. I hope that's the case. I think that might be your algorithm a little bit because I still see a lot of adult women specifically wanting young adult stuff, but I'm hoping that they're moving on and finding older characters to relate to. But I hope that YA can go back to being what it was and be for the teenagers and have, you know, two kids fumbling around in the back seat because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, that's yeah. realistic. And Do that's not. what kids should be reading. <laughs> like, this is... This is what sex at 16 is. It's yeah. not gonna be earth-shattering. Because Reed was... He was straddling up to the line. Mm-hmm. He was right at it. Mm-hmm. At these sex scenes. I'm like, it felt very different. I'm like, what mm-hmm. is this? He was more aggressive and it was angrier and he, you know, yeah, I didn't like it. Which I didn't, I didn't like it either. Now, you know, we, we read spicy stuff. Mm -hmm. We like spicy stuff, but I like it when it's appropriate for the book. Yes. Appropriate for the book, appropriate for the characters. Right. Because he was so angry with her that like. This wasn't quite hitting it either. Like, he wouldn't have been sweet and gentle the way he was the first time. But I don't know that he should have necessarily been this aggressive. This was some random shit to me. Mm-hmm. Just random. And it didn't. I didn't really like it. There was so much I <laughs> did not like. That's okay. Um, I feel like the author stepped backwards with this mm-hmm. book to me. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, yeah. At the end of the last book, I had this big reveal that this guy's going to be a god. So now I have to make all of these bigger reveals and make it bigger and better. I was like, no, you don't. Also, why the fuck do you keep bringing in these random old men who save the day? Like the new father guy who they met at the very beginning who gave them oh my food. Gosh. And then here he is at the end being like, the He's most sane the person guy. and like trying to save the witches even though he believes in god and works for the church like what the fuck yeah this they, makes he's no trying sense to he's claude 2.0 <laughs> yeah but like what no it's weird this whole it thing it was so weird and i i wanted to like it on our mm-hmm. discord uh, there were a couple comments that seemed that the book club was liking it more 
I'm excited to see what they have to say. Um, but unfortunately for me, it didn't hit. And it didn't hit for me either. So when we give our rating, I'm about to do something controversial. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe not. For y'all that are familiar with me, that's not going to be controversial at all. This is you. <laughs> we'll be like, yep, we expected this. Yeah. It's different from what I just told you before we hit record. I figured. The more we- <laughs> You're like, I'm watching your face. Yeah, yes. I know you. I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're a predictable ass yes. book, Tamara. I know what's going to happen. I get it. <laughs> no, so we've been doing this for so long, and I'm watching your face, and I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm like, oh, yeah, she hated this so much more. <laughs> We're being nice in this podcast right now. It's trash. I don't like it. And to be honest, again, so you know, I I read some and listened some, mm-hmm. and I I cannot express enough. If you did not listen to the other conversations that we had, and this is your first time, do not pick this up on audiobook. Do not do it. Do not do it. Holter Graham just throws me off every time it's reads parts. Every time. The, t- the narration was tough. Oof. The grumbling, the, oh, God, no. And some people really loved it. I think maybe they were just really into the story. Like, if you look at the reviews mm-hmm. on Audible, they're not that many, to be fair. But um, only one person kind of called out Holter Graham's narration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... Maybe people just love the story, love the story. But if you're sensitive to narrators, just skip it. Just read it. Because this dude, he is too old to be read. He's too (laughs) old. That's all. That's just my two cents on the audiobook. And, you know, I I do like Holter Graham. And I mentioned in a previous episode, I like him for older characters. Mm Mm-hmm Not young. It throws the whole, it throws the equilibrium off. Like, what Mm -hmm. is this? Mm Mm-hmm. Because Reed is 18. Yeah. Like, he needs to have a deep voice, but it doesn't need to be that deep because it's his balls are still dropping. <laughs> Look, in that scene, a hearing that sex scene, hearing a very domineering type of person. Ooh, that I was, would really throw me off. Because it was. I was waiting for him to, like, act like a wolf and do something wolfy. <laughs> or um, I, I just was like, what? <laughs> It pulled me completely out of the story in the worst way. Oh, I'm sorry. I will avoid. I will avoid it. <laughs> That's bad. Anywho, I think I've said my piece. Um, are there any other things you think we should cover? Any? I mean, we could keep ripping this book apart, but I think we can take a step back and bow out now. I'm sure, like, I could bring up something and you'd just, like, go off on a tangent, <laughs> but I don't want to do that It doesn't to you. take much. It doesn't take much for this to happen with this book. With this or, book. Or trilogy, no. honestly. No. So, okay, I guess we should go ahead and rate it then. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Okay, well, I'll go first then, since you already know. <laughs> two stars. Yep. So, the first book got two, the second book got three, and we're back to two. And the bottom line is, I would not recommend this trilogy to anyone that I know. Anyone that likes what I like Mm -hmm. should not read this. And that's just the truth. Sorry, not sorry. Your turn. That's okay. (laughs) I had such high hopes for this entire trilogy. The first book, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it when I read it the first time. I thought the rest of the series would be better to be fair i was very drunk when i read it so like book one when i read book one Mm -hmm. but ultimately no and with this book i'm so disappointed Mm -hmm. and it's so frustrating although i love seely so i'm i might actually go read seely's book you have a ghost (laughs) i think i have a ghost in my house that was from my kitchen there's nobody oh. in my kitchen. <laughs> that scared me. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you want to go look? <laughs> <Shelby>. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, oh, what is that noise? I'm gonna ignore it. No, um, this book disappointed me so much, so I'm giving it three stars. 
Okay. And three isn't okay. So in three my world, three bad. isn't bad. Three isn't no. bad. It's okay. It's, it's okay. like literally fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this was worse than fine for me. I and you know, and I got through it fairly quickly, to be fair. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as slow as I thought it would be. So I the pacing for me was okay. But I think I was so single, I was driven to finish this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was very focused to finish it because I had other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I allowed myself the time or the luxury to be wishy-washy about finishing it. Yeah. So maybe that is why I finished it so quickly. It definitely wasn't because the story was so great. I, you're right. The pacing was better in this book than book two. Book two was slow as fuck. This mm-hmm. one at least had more action. But again, it was like, she was like, I have to throw everything in here. Let mm-hmm. me, you know, bring in everything at the last minute because why not? Why and not? it just, it felt so piecemealed and awful and unthought through. Yes, so. that's exactly it. So, okay. I guess we're going to end things there for this book. Yes, if you the read this series, let us know. Did you like it? Hate it? Feel mad about it? You think Tamara, you are smoking <laughs> something? This shit is great. <laughs> tell me. I want to know. Defend yes. your defend your rating. <laughs> yes, tell us. And tell us why you give it five stars. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm open to listen. You know. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean I'm going to change anything, but I'm open to listening. <laughs> and, um, okay, so before we tell you um, what is next, because we can't tell you what is next because we don't know what is next, <laughs> here's the housekeeping segment. So for you guys, we are actually, when this, yeah, by the time this podcast is up, the poll is live on Patreon. There are two series options trilogy options Mm -hmm. on patreon and patreon members are going to select which one we are doing next yeah Yeah. so um i'm excited because we picked i picked one and casey picked one and we're not gonna tell y'all which are which is which (laughs) no they're two very different series yes they're very different and um Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be fun regardless. Whichever way we go, I think it's going to be fun. And so you'll want to stay tuned and join us on all the different places so you see what we're reading next. Because no, you want to join Patreon and tell us what we're reading next. Yeah, join. You're going to make sure that the next series is not trash. Yeah, please. Like, do do y'all research. And if it's something you read and loved and you want to hear our opinion on on it, this is a perfect time for you to to tell us what you want. Yes. No, tell us. You you need to pick the next series because our last two picks have not been the best, obviously. I feel like, you know, in the last year, we've had some really good hits, but we've had a lot of misses, too. We've had a lot of misses, too. We've had a lot of misses recently, which is why we want to put the power in your hands hands so yes. and, and still you know i was telling um uh trinette trinette love you she's on mm-hmm. patreon love, and she's in our book trinette. club i was telling her like don't worry if if it goes wrong i won't blame anyone but myself <laughs> because ultimately we picked them again so we picked them. <laughs> we put them up for nomination but you tell us which one to yes. read so don't worry i won't blame anyone but myself if it ends up being bad because we picked the choices <laughs> But we're going to let you tell us which is the better of the two choices. So Yes. yes. Yeah. Let's cross all our fingers, all the toes. Mm-hmm. We need a win. It's March. We need a win. Yes. So we won't be back next month with a fantasy mm-hmm. series. We'll be back kicking In off May. the it, May 1. So you want to join yes. on book clubs, join on Patreon, follow us on social. So when you see the notifications go up, you can... Um, Get your books because it's going to go yes. up before January 1. So you'll see. May 1. You'll know. May 1. Did I say January? <laughs> you said January. I'm just like, we're not going to I'm January. To go back <laughs> into time. Back into time and redo these three books. No. <laughs> I but, thought you were like jumping ahead of next year. Like, I no. give up on 2024. <laughs> Girl, no. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so follow, subscribe on Patreon, place your vote. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. It will I think be. That's um all we have for today. Is that it? I think so. Yeah. 
Okay, so we are going to continue on. The after show is available for you right now. If you want to hear what we're talking about over there, you've already had a sample. You hear Mm -hmm. the kind of stuff we talk about. This one, we actually have some juiciest stuff to talk about because some, some some shit hit. Like after we recorded that yes, one, like the next so, day, like yeah. literally, literally like we the next day, and then shit hit the fan. Yeah, you want to listen to that? Yes. We have some comments, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Also, we're gonna I need end to go this check there. and see if there's a ghost in my kitchen. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end this there. Casey's gonna check on her ghost, and then we'll uh, continue on with the after show. So thank you guys so much for listening to this entire episode. We appreciate you for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us. Do all the things, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye everybody. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a positive five-star review. It's a simple action that makes a big difference. You can also like this episode on your favorite podcast player or share it with your fellow bookworm friends on social media. Joining the Shelf Addiction Patreon family is another way to support us. For as little as $2 a month, you can help our team create even more amazing bookish content. If Patreon isn't your thing, Consider becoming a supporter on the Spreaker app for just $5 a month and gain access to exclusive audio-only content. You can find me everywhere, including Instagram, X, and TikTok under the handle Shelf Addiction. Join our book club of the same name on the book club's website and app where we discuss all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. Thanks for tuning in.